we'll disconnect the exhaust and uh, get that out of the way and we'll uh, move on to getting the heat shielding out here so we can expose the drive shaft Trash up behind here, and now I have to move these mounts. will support the transmission, but this the housings right here that we're going to work on. So right. let's go ahead and get this exhaust. Got the uh, exhaust out. Gonna get the drive shaft out, so I've gone ahead and marked it just so we have the it lined up where it was originally at. Not sure if that's a major issue with them. Uh, pretty straightforward, but uh, the balance I always say to keep them lined up. So I'll remove these four bolts. Remove the center carrier. Look at that. Everything seems to be in. Yeah, line there. And it'll just slide out up here. I we'll have to remove the support bracket and the mount here. Gotta see that. Then up there is the uh, shift linkage here. And we'll disconnect that from the uh, transmission housing. Actually, up here as well, and then I get a new bushing to re come in and replace these. So, I'm gonna tighten that up a little bit, and then uh, disconnect the uh, linkage here, remove the bolts, and we'll pull this off. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drain the transmission, got a lot of drip, so I'll figure out where it's at but here's the drain and uh, move on but, but uh, these are 12 millimeter this is the center carrier so these are 12 millimeter hold it in place and then back here is the rear, rear of the drive shaft that is 10 millimeter that holds it on and I got down to the last one right there and uh, I needed to be able to rotate the wheels. So I've got that done and I'll go ahead and pull this out. Pull those together so they don't get lost. Pretty straightforward.
All right, the drive shaft is out. See up in here. What we're working at. Also make it a lot easier to change out this bushing. But uh, there we are. up here that bolts to Tell you what, that used gear lube that is the uh, transmission fluid in these manual, that gets pretty nasty smelling. See if I'll be able to do that. No. Alright, lesson learned. Undo the four bolts that hold the transmission mount to the transmission. Rather than the 
bracket to the transmission mount. Just hoping I'd be able to kind of get that out of the way, but it's not. And I'd rather go ahead and unbolt the transmission mount here rather than this support brace there. Again, these are all 14 millimeter. So I just wanted to say this, if you're watching this video, I do appreciate it. Leave a comment somewhere down below, just say, hey, I watched this video. Either you can say you liked it, you didn't like it. I'm okay with it either way. I've uh, done this, you know, just for a little bit. Watched a lot of other guys, learned a lot from them, appreciated everything they do. But uh, trying to just, I guess, in a way, document what I do, what I love, what I enjoy doing, and uh, maybe help somebody learn something. Just a couple guys I watched a video of that, you know, one of the few videos of centered differential that I found for the beginning and uh, it's really cool they're doing it to their mom's outback I believe and uh, so I just try to take what I've learned from them and made me improve a little bit on one video and make it pretty decent if not like I said I'm having fun doing it So that's out of the way. Okay. So, I've got to remove this bracket, the housing, or the cover of the housing, but the shift linkage. A little bit of oil dripping out of the uh, tail housing here. We're going to go ahead and clean up the drain plug. It's magnetic, so clean that off. And uh, put it back on the transmission. That is a uh, 70, T70 Torx, not a 65, 65 will fit there, but it can strip it out, T70. I use uh, Company 23 products for some of my stuff on Subarus. Yeah, maybe a little bit overkill, but you know what? The right tool can make the job a lot easier. And I had a T70 from 
a different company. Uh, one of your local auto parts stores, possibly, that uh, stripped out when I first first time I tried to use it. Uh, needless to say, that was frustrating. Twelve millimeter. See up in here. That's the bolt. Uh, not a just undone. You got the shift linkage. It's got this. Comes up. Okay. So go ahead and unbolt it there. There's a pin here. We're gonna have to punch out. And then uh, we're moving that along. Traffic's moving slow on the road out here today. They uh, did the uh, chip and seal on it. They actually took a roller, those road rollers, and went down through to try to pack it down a little bit. And it is a pretty warm, sunny day today. So hopefully that helped. I'll be back. That's what I remember. Need a smaller punch. See if this one's small enough. And there it is. 
Simple little roller pin. It's a double pin setup. So an inner pin and an outer pin. Or an outer pin and an inner pin. There we all look at it. Now, the linkage. Can come free. There we go. So, shift linkage is disconnected from the tail housing. Ouch, that hurt. This is the uh, exhaust hanger bracket. Just need to get it down out of the way because I gotta get the bolts over here. So in a few weeks, we be going back to, uh, I don't know if I'll have this video posted by then, but the middle to the end of June, we'll be going back to work on the uh, 2004 Outback. Uh, I had done the clutch on it, and I don't think I've actually posted that video yet because it was not a success uh, clutch is working great unfortunately the rear main seal that i installed i think i may have set it too deep may have got cocked or some cocked eyed somewhere in the uh in there because about four or five miles uh, probably about three miles into driving it home uh it started leaking oil pretty bad and uh yeah it was leaking a little pretty bad uh, pretty sure it was coming from that area, but the way it looked. But uh, got to go back, pull that transmission again. It should be quicker the second time, right? And uh, get it, uh, get that rear main seal fixed. Hopefully I don't have to uh, replace the clutch, but I have
have another one just in case. So I think we're down to that stage where it's the uh, differential housing that's going to be coming out. Fourteen millimeter. Drain pan over here a little bit. Six. That's it. What's up, guys? Hey, Liv. Pulling the uh, bolts for the uh, tail housing. What's up, Liv? Halfway there.
One more bolt. And then we'll see if we have more bolts we need to go. And now it's right there. There we go. All right, we're gonna let that drain for a little bit.
Alrighty. Got the housing off. It was just a little bit of persistence. A little tapping all around, a little pulling and wedging. I don't think we need more to surface any. I'll clean that up. But what we were after is this kit right here. It's out. Now the question is Is it bad? Or is the problem somewhere else? There's the thrust washer right there. I'll do that where it's at. We'll clean these up. this put back together so there's the new differential I'm going in very smooth and the old one in here A little bit louder, but hopefully that's what the problem was, or bearing down inside there. But either way, I'm gonna go ahead and get this put back in. Pretty straightforward. But uh, try to get it put back together this morning. go. Sides in pretty straight. There was no gasket or RTV on this. So I'm going to put it back together the same way. Hopefully that doesn't bite me in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> 
Here we go. Slides back together pretty decently. We'll just hand tighten these down. Yeah, I didn't made it down pretty good, so I'm not having to worry about using the, uh, what you don't want to do is use the bolts to uh, pull it together. You want to make sure it goes together smoothly without using the bolts, which we had success on that. Halfway there, just about, this is number six. So six out of nine, a little over halfway, I guess. Eight and number nine, way up there on top.
get back in. Got it uh, tightened down. I'm gonna have to go and get the torques back. See, there's the nine bolts. Get the torques back to uh, torque those down, make sure they're good. Uh, attach the bracket here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull one, and replace these uh, bushings, the shift linkage bushings. So we will. Uh, So, before I go too far forward with this, I'm going to go ahead and start putting transmission fluid in there. Because I'll be straight up, I'd rather find out that this is, i got to pull this back off, put some RTV on here, well before I get this all put back together. So, let's go ahead and take care of that. Okay, so... Gonna be uh, filling transmission back up. Got my funnel in. Down there. Going to uh, take care of it. I'm using Amzo Aesthetic 7590. Uh, extended service. It's good stuff here. Uh, Amzo product. And uh, we'll get this. Uh, Next thing set up, 7.4 pints, so it calls for. So that is what, just under four quarts. But uh, we're going to fill it up. I'll do uh, two quarts, and that's four, uh, four pints. See if it's leaking. Add it up a little bit more. Keep going uh, slowly until we get there the right amount. Okay, so I've got six pints in so far and on the dipstick it's reading not sure what I expected still a pint and a half or thereabouts shy I'll just go down there one more time it's in and out but the important thing is if we look under here Dripping, no dripping. So, all right, we'll add the next quart into there and see how it goes. Okay, so just a hair past seven pints, and dipstick's reading right there. Just about the middle between half and full. So we're gonna call that good. For now, we'll go ahead and finish button it up. And uh, once we're got it all put back together, uh, get it down on the ground, check the fluids out. We'll keep, keep an eye on it, obviously. Check the, uh, make sure we're not leaking anywhere and uh, see how it goes from there. But, uh, once again, thank you everybody for watching.